Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're making some coral cupcakes and this recipe is actually from my newest cookbook called Mermaid Food. So if you like mermaids and are looking to fill your buffet table with even more mermaid things, I will leave the link down below. So let's get started. Okay, so first to bake the cupcakes, you wanna beat some butter and sugar with an electric mixer until pale and smooth. Add some vanilla extract and the eggs one at a time, mix them with each addition. And I'll have all the ingredients and steps in the description box down below. In a separate bowl, combine some flour, baking soda, and salt. Add this to the batter in two additions, alternating with the sour cream. Then spoon the batter into a lined cupcake pan. And I'm using the prettiest liners ever, oh my goodness. Uh, I'll link them down below if I can find them. And bake them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes or until a skewer inserted into the centers comes out clean and then cool completely. Next, make the buttercream. Beat the butter with an electric mixer until it's pale and fluffy. Add the vanilla extract and confectioner's sugar one cup at a time, beating with each addition. Then place the buttercream into a piping bag and snip off the end to create a large opening. And alternatively, you could use a large round piping tip. To make the coral, we are using isomalt. If you haven't used it before, it's a kind of alternative sugar. I don't think you like use it in baking so much, uh, but it's actually made from beets, which is kind of cool. So you can like get your baking version of Dwight Schrute going. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, you can buy it on Amazon. So I'll link it down below. You need one bag exactly from the link that I'll provide. It's really, really handy that way. Um, and yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So you want to pour that bag of isomalt crystals and some water into a heavy saucepan and set it to medium heat and whisk until the isomalt has dissolved. Attach a candy thermometer and heat to 280 degrees Fahrenheit. And so um, I always get a lot of questions about do you really need a candy thermometer and yes you do. I know it's so annoying if you don't have one. I'll link one down below that's like cheap um, that you can pick up if you don't have one. I spent years trying to work on recipes and not use a candy thermometer and then I bought one and it's made my life so much easier. The reason why you need to use a candy thermometer instead of just like eyeing it or like boiling the isomalt mixture thing for a certain amount of time is because there's different like stages that the sugar gets to and if you don't heat it to that stage it won't set in the right way and so all your effort is just going to be like ruined and I don't want that for you so it's worth like the I don't know how much it is maybe like five bucks for a thermometer and it will save you and then you can make like these and you can make hard candies you can make marshmallows you can make so many things so I definitely recommend it picking up a thermometer then as for food coloring I decided to use pink um, then stir it and continue heating until it reaches 320 degrees Fahrenheit then once it reaches that temperature, remove it from the heat and pour the isomalt into a heat proof bowl. So I use an aluminum mixing bowl. These are the safe ones to use. Don't use glass because it can shatter from the heat because the isomalt is really, really hot. You wanna be careful. If you're making these cupcakes with your kids, this is the stage that you wanna do yourself. They can watch it and it looks really, really pretty, but um, it, yeah, do, do it yourself. <laughs> Then you want to allow it to cool until it gets thicker and kind of looks like honey. So when you swirl the bowl, it is like very thick, delicious looking honey. It's still hot, but it's just not as runny. Then you want to fill a deep bowl with ice. And so in the video, I get, it's been a while since I shot the book, so I didn't know if I used a glass, glass or a bowl. Um, so I did both in the video. And so the ice is going to help shape the isomalt. So I try to use a very, very tall, glass to give it a different effect um, but my glass ended up breaking when I tried to pull the isomalt out so I recommend the second option that you're seeing me use here which is just like a ceramic bowl um, and then I piled ice in it and you want to use a good amount of ice um, because what we're going to do next is we're going to pour the isomalt on top and it is going to um, I guess what's the right term I don't know flow around all the ice cubes and the different little crevices that the ice cubes make will create those little coral like shapes. It is so cool. And you wanna make sure that you're pouring a couple layers of isomalt onto each little like shape of coral that you make, just to make sure that um, the isomalt is thick enough so that when you take it off the ice cubes, it's not going to break like my phone that just fell. So yeah, it's so much fun to watch. I was like so excited to make it again just to see it like drizzle down. And I set position so that there's lots of little like crevices between the ice cubes will give you a really cool effect. 
And so after you pour the ice melt on, you want to wait until it's completely cool um, and it will set around the ice cube. Some of the ice is going to melt, that's totally fine. You just want to wait until you can handle it without hurting yourself and remove the ice from the ice malt and kind of break the ice malt into pieces. Be careful, the ice malt is very, very sharp. So sharp, I cut myself today and it really hurt because um, I made them today. And um, so you do want to be careful. You can use a butter knife to kind of just like chip at them and like kind of encourage them to break. Um, but yes, just do, do be mindful because it's very easy to just like slice your finger on it. And then all you need to do next is pipe a little swirl of buttercream on top of your cupcakes and top them with the coral isomalt and you are done. So this recipe is from my newest cookbook called Mermaid Food. Um, last year I came out with Unicorn Food and this year it is Mermaid Food. I'm so excited, I cannot believe that um, I've written two books by the time I'm 28. I'm just pinching myself like every day. So um, thank you guys for that because you have given me the opportunity to do this and um, I feel so incredibly lucky. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I have a couple more videos. Of recipes that are in the book coming. We have a narwhal cake, which is so cute, and a kraken cake. Which is so cool. <laughs>